Buenos dias, mi gente. Welcome to La Primera Vez. I'm your host, Christina Reed, and this is the talk show that gives you the chance to get to know your favorite Latinx celebrities. Today, we are joined by the lovely Miss Jackie Cruz. Hi, Jackie. Hi, babe. <laughs> How are you? Good. If you hear some crazy dogs, I'm so sorry. I'm at home. This is what happens. Hey, that is the work from home life. So we cannot complain about that. Okay. We take what we can get, girl. <laughs> yeah. So basically, but the premise of this show is we love to talk about, you know, those big first moments, those cultural defining moments, especially as it relates to being Latina. So we're so excited to jump right in with you. And I guess we can start, we can take it all the way back. We can start to when you were younger and who was the first person you ever saw on TV who looked like you or talked like you? Um, I have to say that Flaca was the first person that I felt represented as, you know, first generation American and, um, you know, my family moving here so I could live off my big dream, you know, the American dream. And uh, yeah, definitely I would have to say, you know, she, she loves music, the 80s, you know, rock. She's into um, Erasure, Depeche Mode, um, of course, The Smiths. And, uh, you know, she was gothic and, you know, my, my mother dressed up a lot like 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 Flaca did. So um, it was the first time I got to see someone like me and my mom, you know, on, on TV. And, and that was my character, Flaca. That's so amazing. I think that's why people connected with her a lot because a lot of, a lot of people saw themselves finally, you know? Well, that says a lot that growing up, there was nobody who you felt like looked like you. So you had to go out and make that for yourself. So I'm sure there are a ton of little girls who are so happy that you did that. Yeah, it, just, it felt really cool, you know, to be a part of a show that like represented not just me, but like every single, I felt like woman right now was represented. And that's why I think Orange is the New Black was so popular because people were seeing themselves and, and not just this regular gorgeous, you know, girl that we're kind of used to seeing or the stereotypical Latina that we're used to seeing. You guys are the game changers. And <laughs> what, what was it like to be a part of a cast that was, you know, so revolutionary, first of its kind, so many black and brown women at the helm? Like, what, what was that like? Um, again, it was like winning the lottery. It felt very like, it was just something that came out of nowhere. Like we would all sit in a room, you know, first season. We're like, what do you think this is gonna be about? Like, you think it's gonna be like, cause it's a good show. Like it's incredible writing. Like we went in, you know what I mean? Like everybody, it was like Survivor in there. Cause we didn't know who was staying, who was going. We knew it was prison. So we could have been there for life, just to do good. And so it was really cool to be like, this game changer and, and um, representative of like my people, which is the Dominican Republic and la gente del Caribe, que, que, you know, que es lo puertorriqueño, el cubano, se sentió muy, muy rico ser parte de un show tan, tan grande. And, you know, we revolutionized kind of like TV in a way, you know? You really did. Like the way my friends did not hear the end of it, I'm like, we have Dominicans on the screen, y'all. I need you guys to know how big this Can is. Can I tell you, there's not even one opportunity. We had five, six opportunities in, in uh, Orange is the New Black. We had like five or six Dominicans, like, I know. Maybe seven at one point. Like yeah, it was it was Platano Power over there and I was like <laughs> absolutely. Oh my god. We have Colombiana, Puerto Rico, Cubano. We had everything which we don't usually get to see, you know? Oh shoot, I'm gonna need some water. Tia! Tia, tu me da un poquito de agua, por favor. Gracias, Tia. Ella no sé, ella no sé qué, ella no quiere que la vea. Ok. Mi canción Lucía 8 es dedicada a mi tía Lucy que está aquí. Ay, tía Lucy. Queremos por este lado, tía Lucy. Tía, te quieren en Latina. Magazine, yeah. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> so back to what we were saying about, you know, being Latina and breaking down those barriers. What does it mean for you to be a part of something, an amazing project that's Oscar qualified? Can you tell us about? Oh my goodness. Um, a Rosa came to me um, out of nowhere too. I think everything that happens in my life is just out of the blue. Like, you know, Orange is the New Black came out of the blue. Um, 
because I didn't give up, you know, on my dream. And um, Rosa came out of the blue too. And uh, Selha, the director, she told me her story. Me and her got on the phone. After I read the script, I'm like, I definitely want to do it. If I can come on as a producer, I can maybe help you cast. Like, I'm willing to fly myself out there. I'll stay in my own place. Like, I slept on the couch in, in you know, because I just moved to LA. So when we were filming Rosa, I, I slept on my brother's couch. I was just like, I even got my brother, my primo. They were both in the, my, in, in the, my brother actually got a little bit mad because my cousin who doesn't speak English very well, he got seen more and he had one line, <laughs> but they didn't show his face. And he's like, yo, what's up with that? And I was like, that's show business. <laughs> it was just, it came out of nowhere and it was just a beautiful story that we've never really seen before. And it combined so many cultures like New York, you know what I mean? We have all types of people that live in the city that, you know, it's a melting pot. So it was really beautiful to see um, the different languages, different music. Um, and the connections of the people. We're just human beings, you know what I mean? If someone loses someone, um, you still have the same heartbreak, you know? We all have corazón, you know? So um, I just, I fell in love with the story and right now, you know, um, they want to expand it. So I, I can't wait for all that. Hell yeah. It feels like we all are Oscar qualified today, so. We I are, honey, <laughs> we are. This is just the beginning, you know what I mean? We're just starting to shine, you know, in a way, you know, um, finally our our stories are are being told and it we're at a, a time where things are changing and it's very refreshing, you know? I am auditioning like crazy, which is amazing because I never ever had so many opportunities before. So I, I'm just honored, honored to be out there, honored that people know my work, honored that they believe I can do it because they've seen it before, but I still got so much more to show. And because of that, I, I produce my own productions, you know, my own thing, my own dreams. <laughs> you're the biggest inspiration, first of all. So you're, you. you're doing music, you are acting, you're producing, and also involved in an animated film? Yes. Is there oh, anything you yeah. don't do? You know, it's just a bold venture um, of in creating like Latinx futurism. And uh, it incorporates, you know, kind of the issues that are happening still in Puerto Rico and its current colonial state. And it's about twins, about reggaeton, la musica, porque yo siento que también en Puerto Rico lo que el corazón es la música, el ritmo. So um, it, it's very deep, this, and it's very close to my heart. And um, it shows a lot of things that could happen to you when you get your, your big dream, like fame and money can, you know, kind of change people. And, and it kind of shows the twists and turns and um, with dark and evil and the, the beautiful the beautiful country of Puerto Rico and what we think could happen and what we should kind of stop you know from happening and it's just really 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 intense and beautiful and the music we have gorgeous musicians from Puerto Rico we have up and coming um, uh, Afro Latino actor who played Vico Antonio um, it's just we have like uh, animators from all over the world, um, from, I don't, I think from Puerto Rico, I think we had Cuba, I'm not sure if it's Colombia, we just have a mixture of Mexico, just, it's just us on the screen, you know, all, everyone's voices, everyone's hearts, everyone's dedication, um, I, I hope that you cry when you see it, but that is I mean, people deserves its own interview because I could go all day about it. No, I, as somebody who grew up on comics, like exclusively, like that was such a big deal for me. And I feel like these big companies have been kind of missing a huge opportunity to be able to tap into the Latinx audience. You know, we're here, there's an immense buying power. There's a huge audience that wants to see themselves in every single different type of media. So I'm just, I'm so happy to hear that you're working on this project. And and what I, what I really want to continue to encourage is just, you know, um, kind of, support supporting each other a little bit more because because there's not so much opportunity that we, we we're always fighting for that one opportunity 
And I just think that if we just put our hands together, that no one could really stop us. And, um, and that's what I want to encourage. And that's what I'm trying to prove with my production company, Unspoken Film, and working with Christian Mercado, and working with women writers like um, Carol Garlick, who wrote my, my short, The Dying Kind. And I just want to keep making it happen and, and kind of like hire my friends, my talented friends. That's beautiful. And that's such a good point that you bring up about supporting each other, you know, lifting as you climb, bringing, bringing the people who you know have talent but aren't necessarily getting a chance to get through those doors. So I just, right. I, love, I love how you outlined that. And I would love to know about any advice you have for the young Latinas coming up who are looking up to yeah. you. You know, what can they expect and how do they protect themselves? How do they stick together? What can they do? Yeah, I mean, look, when I go, when I when I used to, because now because of COVID, everything's virtual. But you know, I'm I'm always focused when you're in audition. You know, but um, I don't know. I just I just feel like never think it's too late. You know, never put it like my 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 goal tagline is never put a, a time limit on your dream because um, I've been dreaming of Flaca since I was seven, and I got her at like 25, 26. And um, I was waitressing season one, two, and three, and um, while being on Orange is the New Black. And I'm telling you, like, it is possible. And, you know, the person that I, you know, inspired me to be Flat Guys, a girl that I worked with, you know, and she's very familiar. She's, she's one of us. And um, I was like, you're so funny. I'm gonna play you on TV one day. I swear to God, she can tell you the story. She's from Ecuador, and um, uh, I, I ended up imitating her for Flaca, and um, I give her the credit all the time. Karina, I love you. <laughs> we love and you, she, Karina. All of, yeah, and all she, of us love you. She is amazing, and um, I used to tell her, I'm like, girl, you're gonna have a black card one day. She's like, oh my God, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever told me before. And I was like, I was like, girl, I see it. She's like, oh my God, thank you. You know, and yeah, I just, and we're homies. We're all like so close. You know what I mean? Still to this day. I love that you said it's never too late. That's personally something I needed to hear. And I'm sure all of our Latino viewers would be happy to Absolutely. hear that too. I feel like so many times I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Like. I should have done that back in college or I should have even started back in high school or something. So those words are so important and such a good yeah. reminder. You have one life, okay? Why not do what you love? Why not try it? At least if you're, if you're freaking terrible at it, at least you tried it. You know what I mean? Like that's what I learned through this like terrible time. My family, be grateful for my, my, my mom, my, my tias. My husband, girl, my husband. I was, I was <laughs> gonna say, those pictures were everything. So Thank I have you. to congratulate you because that looked Thank amazing. You. And uh, that's his art right there. He's an artist. Okay. <laughs> I'm beaming. I can't believe you shared all these amazing gems with us. So we have time for one more question, which okay. is kind of a big fun one that I like to end on. And can you tell us about any full circle moments that you've had so far that have made all of the sacrifices, all of those, you know, all of those big moments in life worth it so far? Um, I never got to go to prom because uh, I didn't have money and, for a dress and I also had a terrible car accident and uh, I don't even know if I was like, I missed it because I was in the hospital, but regardless, I couldn't buy the ticket anyways. But I always said, it doesn't matter, mom, I'm going to be in the red carpet one day. But when it came full circle, you know, the SAG Awards were probably one of the best times of my life just to bring my family there, bring my aunt that, you know, has been seeing the struggle throughout the years. And she's like, you actually did it. You know what I mean? Getting that SAG award, like with my cast and, and being on the red carpet and not being able to do all those things as a kid, because financially I couldn't, you know, or get to do those fun things. You know, I, I was literally homeless when I was 16 because I moved out of my house and I was, you know, I didn't want to listen. And uh, 
you know, I went through so much crap that uh, just being on that carpet just made me believe that all my Oscar dreams, Grammy dreams, Tony dreams, all that is possible. And I don't care if I'm 80, 90 years old, I, this one life, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try for all of it. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I feel like I'm looking at an EGOT winner and- uh, <laughs> EGOTs, because EGOTs. of the SAGs. Of course, the SAGs, <laughs> SAGs girl. <laughs> silly of me come on oh i mean God. i see it i see the vision i mean listen if you don't believe in you like come what? on nobody else will i i think that orange is the new black gave me the courage even more courage than i had before because it already felt impossible but orange made it possible for me and now my dreams are bigger than i ever imagined oh my gosh i have i wish you could see but this shirt you can't but i did <laughs> I do have goosebumps. That was amazing. And to see a fellow Dominicana doing her thing, I mean. Bless you, Christina. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, I am honored to be one of your first guests on your show. My um, short Nuevo Rico is premiering in South by Southwest. So I'm really excited about that. So you can watch it there, sign up. Um, let's see, I just, I have a lot, this movie coming out, Lansky, which um, I have a few scenes with Harvey Keitel and Sam Worthington, which is really cool. Yeah. That should be out this summer. Working on music behind the scenes, don't know where that's at, but um, I have this incredible vision for my music. And again, I'm not, there's no time limit. Like I don't need to rush it. People know that I can do it. And you know, COVID happened and I needed to just, you know, put my ducks in a row. So music is coming out soon, hopefully. I got a whole new thing that I'll come talk to you about separate mm -hmm. from this for summertime too. Uh, that that I can talk I'm about. getting the exclusive. Yes, you're getting the exclusive. I can't talk about it yet, but um, it's just a lot of things, like a lot of things, you know, that I've been working on I, 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 on my own TV show, hopefully um, pitching it. And I can't, again, not talk about it. No, no, no. We won't, just we won't. Please just send good energy, good vibes. We're you know, manifesting I, all of this for you. And where can they find you on social? Um, uh, Jackie Cruz and on Instagram and um, JackieCruz.com for my music. And uh, MS Jackie Cruz, Miss Jackie Cruz on Twitter. And then Jackie Cruz on Facebook. That's pretty much it. Yes. I knew someone at Facebook and Instagram, so I got the name. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you, Jackie. And ciao. Thank everybody. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Latina Magazine. Un beso grande. <laughs> ciao. <laughs>